Hello, everybody. I am really excited to be here today to talk to you about how you can integrate AI assistance into your Shiny apps. Now, my name is James Wade. I'm a chemist in the chemical manufacturing industry at Dow, um, and this is my first R Pharma experience. I'm here today, you, or you might have expected that I was going to be here today if you're familiar with any of the packages that I've contributed to, or maybe have followed some of my uh, YouTube videos to talk about AI coding assistance. I think they're fantastic, but I actually want to take, talk a little bit more about Shiny. And a big part of that is because I was strongly inspired by Joe Chang's talk at PositConf just a few months ago. And as I hope most of you saw, I was also inspired by the talk that he gave earlier today. I'm continually impressed by the uh, ability that Shiny gives us to translate our ideas into functional, impressive applications with minimal amounts of code. And these language models are only going to further extend that. Fortunately, Joe did a lot of the groundwork and introductions that I hope to build on today to some of these fantastic new capabilities, namely Elmer and Shiny Chat. These are packages predominantly developed by folks at Posit that really level up the capabilities that you have of integrating language models into your R code, and in particular, into Shiny applications. I want to focus on especially structured output, but I'll be touching on a lot of the different other pieces as well. Given this is a lightning talk, I will be flying through a lot of these things, but you can see the link of the code at the bottom here if you want to follow along. So let's dive into this. I first, though, want to start, before I show you any code, with a reminder of some of the advice that Joe shared back at PositConf, which is if all of your uh, intuition for how you're thinking about the use of these language models comes from using them as a chat interface, you're actually missing out. And he calls out some specific capabilities that I think are particularly useful, like structured output and tool, and, and tool calling. So let's start coding here. But again, one more caveat before we dive into that. I want to help uh, give you my own mental model for how I use these by continuing some of the advice that Joe shared. You might have heard this stochastic parrot metaphor where we're not thinking about these language models as actually being able to reason, which is probably factually correct, but is actually bad intuition for how you should use these. Instead, we can think about these as machines that reason, which may be factually incorrect, but does give us a good intuition for how we can approach these agents. So I'm going to mostly skip over how we can go in and build some of these capabilities, but I want to re-emphasize the point that Joe made earlier, with, which is with less than 20 lines of code, you can have a functional chatbot. Now, the code that I show here, this is just using uh, Shiny BSLib and Shiny Chat. It doesn't actually have a backend for that, but of course, we have Elmer that can help us go and do those capabilities. You already saw some of, some of the, the um, capabilities that Elmer can provide. And from my experience, the API here or the API wrapper really gets these abstractions right. I really appreciate how I can think of uh, with minimal amounts of code, I can connect to many different sources here. And this is quite powerful. We're not limited by, by the choices that the programmers have made, in this case, mostly Hadley Wickham. We can extend upon them. And again, the abstractions here, I think, get the balance between the complexity of the APIs and the user friendliness just right. We can do these chat interfaces. This is something that's going to be, uh, I'm sure is familiar for many of those. So again, I'm gonna zoom through a lot of this, but really all you have to do to change the backend is, is change a single function call. We can easily pass some images to this. For the example that I used here is I didn't understand the, uh, the name of the package or, or the, the hex sticker. So we can ask this, tell us that this is from Elmer the Patchwork Elephant. I didn't actually validate this, so hopefully this is not hallucination. Um, and we can also ask follow-up questions for this to see, okay, does this hex sticker actually match well um, with the package? And of course, unsurprisingly, it was carefully selected. So yes, yes, in fact, it does. Uh, we can do go even further with some of, some of these by passing plots using a content image plot function to this. And again, this is another point where the API wrapper gets this abstraction just right, where all you have to do is call content image plot, and you can intermix these text with words here. So we're using a, a multimodal chat interface, or excuse me, a, a programmatic interface that makes this about as easy as it could be. We can take this and build this into an actual chatbot, bolting on that back end like you saw, saw from Joe before, where we're really talking about less than 10 lines of code 
uh, where you can have a functional chat interface. Now, this one is a, is a bit simple, and I would challenge all of you, if you want to go build some of these capabilities yourself, to go well beyond this. And to do that, we can go back to some of the advice that Joe gave here. So yes, we want to start coding, right? We were showing some examples here of how we're, how we're going to go and, and use um, programmatic approaches to access these APIs. But I want to emphasize again the structured output and the tool calls and the power uh, that you can use for these. If you take nothing else uh, away from this talk, I, I implore you to go test out the structured output capabilities. Uh, they're quite powerful and give us um, capabilities that I haven't actually, that, that um, give us a new way to interface with these chatbots or these language models, excuse me, not chatbots. That then you'll see an example of in just a moment. I thought it was funny not knowing what Joe was going to talk about that I ended up picking a very similar example for how to integrate some of these tools. Um, as a reminder, if you didn't see this before, uh, you can it, uh, integrate a tool for checking the weather. So I use this actually to see if I'm going to need an umbrella when I'm taking my kids uh, trick or treating in just a few days. And the answer, unfortunately, is that yes, we're going to be it's going to get wet, but not going to be too cold. I, I live in Midland, Mission, Michigan, as you can tell uh, from the chat interface here. This also highlights another easy or another utility that exists within the Elmer package with just um, a, a single function live browser. You can take a chat agent and turn it into a chat window that you can interact with, much like you would something like ChatGPT or Copilot. I won't step through the details here of how to go do this, but it's quite easy to go and add these tools there. If you have a, a, a function that you've already written, um, there's some helper functions that can actually write a lot of the specifications for you. The tooling is something that took me a while, even though I've been interfacing with these APIs for a good bit to be comfortable with. But I, I wanna encourage all of you to skip over that hesitation. The, the, the tools here really are where a lot of the, the power lies. So the most uh, exciting capability coming out of these, again, is the structured output capability. Let me emphasize again why this is so important. What we're doing is we're having these models that will now adhere to a defined structure, a defined schema that we can specify with something like a with like JSON. What this means now, because it will adhere to the specification, the structured output makes these LLMs programmable. So this is a genuine step change in how we can use these because now we can rely upon the outputs and anticipate the, the returns of these. And now we can uh, build all sorts of fancy things, much, much like um, examples uh, the most salient example that come to mind are the chatbots that uh, Joe showed earlier today. A simple example of this would be to uh, extract uh, entity information coming out of a biography, maybe name, profession, interests, and because we're at an R conference, a favorite package. And we can pass this. In this case, I've taken uh, Joe's bio um, from the R Pharma um, webpage, and we can get this structured output coming out of this. Now, we, we, we don't have to stop there, of course. I took my own bio from this and applied the, um, the, the, the same schema to extract this information coming out of it. And you might notice here that I actually didn't specify any packages in my own bio, so it didn't know what my favorite might be. So this is actually a way where it was missing that information, but still gives me some information or get, still gives me a way to handle that uh, programmatically by I asked the model to give me to fill in that missing piece. So this is a toy example, but we could think of something a bit more complicated here. Uh, I, I'm not in the pharma industry, so I'm not sure how tired you are of these GLP-1 receptor agonists and studies coming out of them, but say you never want to read one again, maybe you can use this structured output uh, to, to your advantage here, where you can take some unstructured text, apply this schema, and get a, a, a fairly sophisticated structure coming out of that. The code component of this actually looks quite simple. Like we initialize the chat interface much as we had before. I have a helper function uh, that you can see in, in the repo for the, where this talk is, talk is housed to uh, extract this with very little cleanup of the text itself. Um, and then we, we uh, use this extract data function. That really is, ends up being the key here, passing that specification much as we had before. There's another uh, extraction to convert this to a table or a helper function to convert this to a table. And you can see the result that comes out here. And of course, you don't have to apply this just to a single one. You can apply this to many. Um, you can here's how here's what the schema actually looks like um, from an overall layout of that. And I won't go through this for the sake of time. And we can specify this in the code much as we de have done before. I'm going to quickly close here with um, zooming out and thinking again about the sidebots and thinking what what makes them so useful. 
What makes me so excited about them is it actually gives the power of Shiny that I love to the users of my applications. Now that I can give them a dynamic interface that responds to their, their, what they're most interested in, the creativity of this application is no longer limited just to me. I can hand this over to, to, to others. So with that, thank you very much. I'd be happy to answer any questions in the chat. Uh, I see a, a question about the uh, chat GPT or Claude. I don't think we have a, there, there's not a, a free one available if you're paying for those pro versions of, of either client. I think you can, if you have GitHub Copilot, use that for some of these Elmer capabilities, but that's uh, quite a new, um, that's, that's a bit of a niche area. So I think you can do that. Yeah, thanks, James. I'm sorry I was joining away from the from the backstage. Very <laughs> all the moving moving parts here in, in the R Pharma. Um, I was going to ask, you know, what I asked Joe this, but I want to get your take on this. Um, how how excited are you about the progress of like the open source models, like Olama in this space? Have you had good luck with those, and where do you think that's that's going in the future? Yeah. So the only time that I'll use them today is if I have to, but I think that that's going to quickly change. What this isn't open source, but what I think is particularly compelling is that with the latest models out of Claude, the Haiku, the smallest model, has the same performance as their largest model in the Claude 3 version, so the previous version that they had released. I anticipate you'll see continual, continued movement, most likely the biggest, the, the most notable of these coming from um, Meta with the Llama releases. Um, they're quite powerful, but because we're continually pushing the boundaries of these, I'm always finding myself chasing the best one uh, to, to kind of give me the, the, the best um, responses here. However, um, I think that we can be inspired by um, what like companies like Apple are doing with Apple Intelligence, where they're dynamically routing some of the queries to large and small models based off their complexity. The smaller model there, I think that's where some of the biggest opportunities reside. Awesome, thank you. Um, and then uh, just came in a chat here for a question from mm. Peng. Can you illustrate again why LOMs are yeah. good for unstructured text to structure data? Yeah, so it's effectively what, what it comes down to is, um, I, I think it's a little bit easier to see it in this format here, um, where you can see this hierarchy here. We specify this, and if the, the simple answer is that this comes back to their quote-unquote reasoning abilities, right? They, they have some, uh, I've found fantastic reliability um, in getting things like asking, uh, for particular questions about how many participants were in a study. If that is stated in the text, um, there's fairly good reliability coming out of these frontier models in order to do that activity. Um, this is something that you certainly don't have to, to take my word on. Um, this this was, um, I, I would encourage you to go and, and try this on your own your own PDS where you, where you know the answer coming out of that. You can specify a schema here. Again, we're really talking about only a few lines of code once you have that specification there. And uh, Joe earlier was referencing some documentation uh, that that Hadley was working on uh, that should be should be merged in the next few days. I think it got merged this morning, so you should be able to go to the, the Elmer repo and check some of that stuff out uh, right right away and see more user friendly examples for how to how to get how to test this out in your room. Excellent, yeah, thank you so much. I, I can't wait to test some of this as well. Another area I've been yeah interested in testing. I didn't get as far as I would like is the idea of, of um, you, you blogged about this a year or so ago about vector databases and curating mm. these additional sources as information. I've heard pros and cons of that approach, depending on the source itself, but I do feel like those could be, could be helpful in, in a lot of these situations too. Absolutely. It goes back to the context. So that if, if you have the context there, um, if, if you don't make these, these models guess, right, they, they, the performance could be uh, really good. Um, so passing some, one thing that I saw, I, I know that Joe called out Jeremy Howard. Um, he, he started doing something with his own packages where he actually writes some of his documentation specifically oriented towards how a language model might ingest it. Now it happens to be useful for us too, um, but having maybe these cheat sheets that you can just say, okay, here's how this package or capability works. Um, if we would see more of those, I think that could be a powerful uh, way to um, not potentially even skip over the the vector database and just pass the pass a, a short snippet to describe how something works. It's not too different from what they did. What what's happening in the back end with Shiny Assistant uh, for specifying how Shiny for Python works. Excellent. Thank you so much. And um, looks like we 
may have uh, stopped at the questions there. But yeah, um, James, for those that want to follow your adventures in this space, where is the best place for them to find what you're up to? Yep. So most most uh, social places I use this James H. Wade as my handle. Um, so uh, I guess blue sky is starting to blow up all of a sudden. So maybe go check that out. And also I uh, hope to be getting back to uh, posting YouTube videos soon. So it's, it's more or less the same handle there. If you just search my name on YouTube, you should be able to find me. Uh, I need my my youngest children to get a little bigger to get more of those, but I, I, I miss it. So I hope to get back to it soon. You and me both, my friend. I want to get back to mine as well. But I, every time you had a video on, I smash yeah, yeah. that like button. You, you 